This is 32-year-old Tiffany Powell and her new boyfriend, 38-year-old Paul Reed. On April 26, 2014, Tiffany called 911, claiming that her ex-boyfriend, 69-year-old James Harris, had broken into their home and attacked Paul. She claimed that while Paul was trying to defend himself, he would end up killing James by accident. What happened tonight? Tonight, well, today, um, we were in there for like three weeks and we were washing our clothes and we just decided because... You've been on Minota for three weeks? About, about, I came, yeah, from, I came from a domestic violence shelter and went to there. But both me and Paul, um, like when I came out of the domestic violence shelter, I stayed out in the car for about a week. So we had a lot of clothes and stuff. So I asked him if, if we could wash clothes and we were... Well, you asked who if you could wash clothes? Paul. I'm scared of basements. <laughs> so I had him to put the clothes in the washing machine. To come over tonight and put the clothes in the washing machine? Well, he's he's there every night. It's just that I asked him to... Oh, to, tonight, because you were afraid to go in the basement, you asked Paul to go downstairs? Yeah. Okay. And tonight was the first night I ever was in the basement. Um, so he was down there and he kept talking and talking and I kept saying, I can't hear you. And I left the door, the back door open. And I started to go down the stairs and I, I didn't exactly see who came through the door. And then I kind of got around the corner and I was like, Around the corner in the basement? Yes, I said, somebody's in here. And um, he started coming down the steps. He must have saw me from the bottom because the light was on down there. Who must have? So you got to use James. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's That's James okay. Harris. James Harris. <clears throat> and then Paul, um, he's, I, James Harris said something. I can't remember exactly what he said. But Paul grabbed him and he was like, um, what did he say? He said something about, get off me, man, get off me. And then, um, I went up the stairs and called. And I heard, well, I did see, I did see, before I went upstairs, I did see him have something shiny. I didn't know it was a gun or anything. I thought it was a knife. And, um, I still don't even know if it's real or not because I don't know him to have guns. Well, but anyway, um, I saw him have something silver and then I went upstairs and then I called the police, the 911, and told them, and I just heard them, you know, and I was like, well, you know, I'm gonna go down there and they kept saying, don't go down there, don't go down there. So things got quiet when I was on the phone. I eventually went down there and there was a light bulb, you know, broken and that's how I cut my foot down there. And <clears throat> Tim Harris has this, all I could see was a little part of a silver thing sticking out of his hand. And, and Paul was trying to grab his, like hold his hands. And then, um, I'm trying to think what happened next. Everything was so fast. Um, I said, I said, you want me to get, you want me to get, get that out of his hand? And, and he was like, he didn't say any, anything actually. He just started breathing heavy or whatever. And he kept saying, did you call the police? And the police was on the phone. So they could hear everything that was going on, 911. <clears throat> then um, he just, he says, I think he, I think I choked him out. You know, we didn't know he was gone or anything. So he was laying there. And um, I think that's when you guys came, but no, I had no idea he was gone, you know. Like. Tiffany and James had five children together, and they both had been involved in a custody battle for them. Tiffany would end up losing that battle, mostly because she could not provide them with a stable home. Tiffany is about to explain how her life has been since she separated from James. She needs to convince the detectives that she is a victim, and Paul was only protecting her from a mentally unstable man. My kids need him right now. I've been on a run for like five to six years. I lost my kids because I kept my kids out of school because I've been running from him. And every time he finds out so where I live at, he comes <clears throat> he comes there. And when I used to live with him, he used to 
Okay, just for the simplest thing, like somebody saying hi to me outside or whatever. And, you know, he would he broke my nose before. And he, what he would do was he would call shots to one of his daughters or something down or whatever to be a witness or whatever to, to lie for him so he can go ahead and do whatever he wanted to do to me. You know what I mean? But I lost my kids because I've been running from him for five years. I kept my kids out of school. He was going to the schools, getting my address. He would go inside of my house. And then, well, it's, it's always been a thing where if I don't, you know, if I don't give him what he wants, then he causes problems, like following custody um, for my children. And, and I've had five children, and I've all, my lawyer went in and got child support for two of them. You know, and he's been retaliating since then. I've been too scared to put those other three children on because I. Okay. Um. He wants me to come back and be in his house and take care of the kids mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. He says he's not going to get no kind of girlfriend or anything like that. Just recently, he found out I was pregnant. I've been trying to stay clear from him. I've been wearing big coats and stuff when I go to McDonald's to see my kids. Cause, um. He is, he was trying to play it safe where, you know, he tried to make like I'm a bad guy in court and he's trying to make it like, you know, um, he don't want nothing to do with me and um, he, he won't let me see the kids or what, he's asking for me not to see the kids or whatever, but. Is there any legal orders that keep you from seeing the kids? No, not from, keep me from seeing the kids. Um, like a, like a no contact or anything? You There's no, not a no contact order. No, but I, what, I have a plan. You haven't seen him for two weeks. What's your plan? How often are you supposed to see him? I'm supposed to pay for visits and I can't right now. Okay, so you have to pay the supervised visitation? Yeah. And you have to pay for the supervision? I have to, because I'm going, yeah, I'm going through a you know, case plan. Mm -hmm. And um, The detectives are more concerned with the what and not the why. They want to know exactly what happened in that basement so they can compare it with Paul's story and see if it really was self-defense. So I, I want to be clear. Okay. You're in the basement with Paul. Yes. And all of a sudden he just shows up out of nowhere. The door was open like this much and he just came in. The door at the top of the stairs? At the top of the stairs. The so back, he came in the back door? The back door. How do you know he came in the back door? Because I don't... We don't go out the front door, and I didn't hear anything on the steps or in the, or in the ceiling or anything. So really, you don't know what door he came in. The you front door was locked. The front door, you so know, to you the house. So maybe he picked it or something. I don't. I never known him to pick it. He he might use a credit card. Yeah, I guess. So. My point being, you didn't see him come in the back door. You don't really know what. No, door. I seen the door open. I said somebody's oh, in here. Okay. And um, yeah, the I don't know. But I know he knows so how to So you were standing at the bottom of the stairs then? I might have been on one or two steps. Okay. At the close to the near bottom. But um and then he came downstairs? Yeah, well, I went around the corner, I said, somebody's in here, and then he started coming down, and that's when Paul came out of the back with the washers and dryers and mm -hmm. Who was all over at your house today? It was it was me and Paul. Is there anybody else there? No. Okay. So it was you, Paul, and then eventually. Eventually him, but we we just got this place. We've been trying to keep it. Tiffany's story does not make much sense because James had nothing to gain by attacking Paul. However, Tiffany did have motive to take James's life. With James gone, Tiffany would regain custody of her children. The police believe that Tiffany lured James to her home so Paul could take his life. Okay. All right, well, um, our job is kind of a difficult one. All right? I understand. We, we, have to, we have to view all sides, and our, our job is to um, not only solve what happened okay. and piece together what happened, but it's also to protect, you know, people who are innocent, make sure that, you know, we, we find all the details okay. and you know, we piece everything together. Right. Okay, and we, Sergeant Lake and I have been doing this for quite a long time. Okay. okay. Um, there's some things about this that just aren't adding up. 
And I don't think you're being completely truthful with us. About about, about what about what happened exactly about what happened tonight. Everything. Listen. Okay. Let, let's 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 not play the game. You, okay. You get yourself in a lot of trouble. Okay. So you need to start. You need to start telling us the truth. I understand what you're saying. Sir. And you're not telling hey. us the truth, and you're about to go down a road that you don't want to go. I understand what you're saying, sir. No, obviously you don't. Yeah, I do. I really do. I understand, sir. Okay. So. Why don't you go ahead and tell us the truth? About I He didn't he didn't show up and just walk into your house on a that's, that's not what happened. We already know that's not what happened. I was in the basement when he came and pushed the door open. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Try again. I was in the basement. I don't even have anybody. I don't have anybody but my mother. My mother is the only person that I have in life. Well, like I said, we have Multiple witnesses, not just one. If you want to go with the story that you're going with, that's fine. But it's it's it, it can it can lead to murder charges. Is what it can lead to. So, so what I'm saying is, says you might to if, if you didn't know what was going to happen to him, if you didn't, if this was just going to be talking, and somebody else took it too far, and you're not and you're not involved in that part, you need to tell us now, okay? I couldn't have Hold him on my address. Sure. Listen. Okay, if things got out of hand and went too far, and it wasn't your fault that they went too far, then I can understand that, and we can work with that. Oh, I understand. Okay, but with what you're doing right now, being untruthful with us, we cannot work with that. Okay, well, there's nothing we can do to help you then. Okay, and I want to help you. Okay, I do, but you're gonna have to help me help you. Okay. I understand what you're saying, sir. Okay, then why don't you, if you understand what I'm saying, why aren't you helping us help you? Because you're you're digging yourself a hole here, and it's getting deeper and deeper. Pretty soon, I'm not going to be able to help you. James was called and lured to that house. He was called and what? He was called on the phone, and he was lured to that house. By who? That's what we're asking you. Somebody came in out of your house and met him in the driveway, walked him around the back of your house, and then that person left. Listen, if you're going to, if, 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 if you want to help yourself out and keep yourself, you know, on the witness side of things because you didn't know what was going to happen down in that basement, that's, that's fine. But you're going to have to start right now. You can't start later on. So, because we are, we are going to, we are going to piece this together in, 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 uh, it's not going to take us very long. By the end of the night. By the end of tonight, we will know everything. And the thing is, is, is you would rather be on our side than not on our side. Right. So the police searched the call logs from James's phone, and they found that someone had called James multiple times before he arrived at Tiffany's home. The police believe that whoever called James created a fake story to get him to come to that address. Whose phone number is that? I think that's Jahari's. I think it's my daughter's phone. She's an, he, has, he gives her Obama phones. People sell him Obama phones and he gives them to my daughter. That's my 11 year old, I believe. She has a phone, she has several phones, the Obama phones. Why don't we try that again? It's not your daughter's phone. Can you, can you call no, her and talk to her? No, please. It's not your daughter's phone. You know it's not your daughter's phone. Look, you know whose phone it is. I can, look, I, I can see the weight of, of all this starting to weigh you down. And you're starting to grasp at straws. No, I'm just. This, this is this is this is not going well for you. I understand. Okay, and the the problem is is that the the longer we we play this game, the more and more trouble it's going to cause for everybody. Right. Your kids included. Okay, so th this is not this is not going well. They need you right now, and 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 you're putting them in a position to not have you, and that's it, it's time for you to come come out with the truth. So whoever whoever it is that you're protecting, you have to understand. You have to to come to the thought: Do I want to protect my children, or do I want to protect this other person? Right. So. I, I needed James Harris to have my. Kids. I, I understand that, which is why I don't think that you intended for him to get murdered inside your house. If that wasn't your intention and somebody else got carried away, that's that's that's, that's different. But you need to tell us the truth. You guys are just you're not gonna believe me, but I think that that's the number to my daughter's Obama phone. I think I really hundred percent think that that's her phone. 
She calls me from several Obama phones, and I think that that is one of them. Okay. Like I said, we want to know, we want you to tell us about what happened tonight. The truth. You're lying. We do this every day. Your lie is not going to hold up, and you're going to end up in a lot of trouble. I'm telling you that right now. If you don't want to, if you don't want to tell us the truth, that's fine. But it's not going to hurt me or Detective Ross. I know it's not going to hurt you. It's going to hurt you, and it's going to hurt your kids. Okay, so I really want you to stop lying to me and tell me the truth now. I'll even we're not even, we're not mad at you. People lie to us the first time all the time because they're nervous and they're scared and all that. And we're not offended. We're not gonna. We don't think you're bad because you're lying to us. We're scared. I would okay, think that I was but, bad. But what I'm telling you right now is that you're that you're really about to do yourself a lot of harm, and we want to help you, and you're not letting us. So uh, what I'd like you to do is start your story again from the top and tell the truth this time. Please, it's what's best for you and your kids, just to be honest. I almost called you baby. I'm just still talk, used to talking to him. But I'm having a baby pretty soon. I didn't want none of this. I'm not sure I didn't you didn't. I didn't want him coming to the house. I didn't want him knowing my address. What happened? What's the truth? It's different. Let me, let me just tell you this. There's going to come a day when you're sitting in the courtroom. Okay. Now, what's going to happen on that day is based on the decision you make now. You may be sitting across the table from Detective Ross wishing to God that you would have told the truth right now. Or you may be just in the witness stand telling the truth. Right. But that's based on the decision you make right now. And right now you're making the decision to lie. I'm telling you it's the wrong one. And I can't tell you how many defendants I've talked to in situations like this where I've said... You, you're going to be so sorry if you don't tell us the truth right now. And they, they come to me afterwards and they're like, you're right, I should have told the truth. Now look at my life. Right. Well, has there ever been a case where they were, where they were telling the truth? And no. No. I mean, no. because you guys, yes, you were intimidated to just try and get me to lie, but... We're not trying you know, to... I mean, no, we're trying saying. to get you not to lie. We're trying to get you to tell the truth. We're already, t we're already telling you, the re we've already told you the reasons why we don't think that your story makes any sense and you don't have any answers for them. You can't tell us why your story is different than his. You can't tell us uh, why we have Did the phone records us? that we have. Then pause? Yes. yes. You, you, can't, you can't tell us, you can't, you, you don't, you're not providing us with any answers. I gave you my phone, I'm being 100% open with you, I'm, I'm, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm just, R really I am. I, you know, I really, like I said, I need if, to, to if, if we were, kids. If we were talking right now and you were hooked up to a polygraph and we asked you these exact same questions, what would that polygraph tell us? Well, I've heard a lot of stories about polygraphs, so, you know, and I don't know. They're very I, accurate. I don't know. I heard that when people were, you know, have a certain mental, you know, where they basically believe their own lies that they can get through it. My 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 counselor, she talks about polygraphs all the time. She does. Do you we're believe asking your own lies? You know, well, do you believe your own lies? No. Then that won't. That doesn't apply. Okay, to you. A lot of people diagnose me with different things. Like what? Well. Not exactly diagnosis they believe. Okay. You know, what do they believe? Like, I've have I've had a psychological evaluation where they thought that I was I'm trying to think of how you say the word uh, schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause I, whether you guys know it or not, I have a bad phobia. That's why I don't go down the basement. Bad phobia. Germs. Um. So I've been diagnosed with different things because of that. What exactly are you diagnosed, officially diagnosed? Well, not officially. I've been diagnosed with par paranoia recently mm -hmm. and a phobia slash OCD. So I've been diagnosed with. Okay. So th those don't play into being untruthful. I, I don't know what exactly the things were. All right. Here's the thing. Wow. Right now, you're being untruthful. Right now, I know it would break the machine if you got all that. It would just, it would just break. Uh, and you know what? You seem like a really nice person. I just don't understand why we're having this much trouble getting you to be honest with us. Um, 
I don't want none of this to happen. I don't want none of this. I don't want him to know my address. I just, well, I, I, I think that this to happen. you're right. But the, the problem is, is that somebody in connection with you got him to come to that house under false pretenses. When he got there, one thing led to another, and he ended up dead in your basement. I can tell you this, me or Paul did not know that he was coming. We did not know at all. Then who brought him there? I swear to God. Then who brought him there? I'm trying to tell you, I think he knew where it was at a couple days ago, sir. Somebody brought him there with phone calls tonight. My, the point is, I feel like even if all this, even if I have, even if I'm able to leave here, I don't feel like I can go back to that house anymore because, well, he's, if he is gone, I still can't believe it, but if he is gone, his family and everything else, you know what I mean? I, you know, I, I really. Okay, well, um, we're, we're going to go, we're, we still have more people to talk to, but um, I, I really hope that you reconsider telling the truth because I, I can I Can I say this to you real sure. quick, though? Jim Terrace is, is a very smart man, mm -hmm. you know, and everything he gets charged with, if you look at his record, even like him, he used to be a teacher down here and he gave his students wedgies and stuff like that. He's gotten off on everything. Okay. Even, I mean, not off, but, you know, like my domestic violence, knocked down to a misdemeanor, whatever. Well, not a misdemeanor, but a disorderly conduct. Now, you know, and just like the situation where I was trying to tell you where, where we, me and him, we get into a physical fight, he called down his daughter to be a witness. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To cover mm -hmm. his ass. Well, the problem was, is that he didn't do that tonight. That's what I'm thinking, Jabari. Wasn't the whole situation with Jabari, why Jabari was there, to, he, and I think that his plan went wrong. I've been sitting in here thinking that maybe he came there, you know, was just going to go ahead and just kill me. Didn't know Paul was there because Paul, like I said, parked his car way far away. Mm -hmm. Came there to just kill me or talk to me or something to get me back there. And then things didn't work out right. So he was going to go and kill you with your five children in the car? That's a cover-up. I've been sitting I, I, here thinking about it. I, I, I think that's a nice try, on no, your, a nice effort on your part. God. I, I don't believe. Be I don't believe it. I'm trying. I'm he was he was lured there, and we're, we're going to. By the end of the night, we'll have a name. Keep it, keep and then and you you are going to be in trouble along with that person that that we. Just keep in mind that he's not an innocent man. Okay. The detectives decide to interview Paul to listen to his version of the story. After they gather more evidence, they will go back and confront Tiffany again later in this video. For now, let's see if Paul's story matches Tiffany's. Okay, I, I took the, the handcuff off of you for that, just uh, to emphasize that point. You are not under arrest, but we are going to advise you from Miranda rights. Just, uh, we just got done talking with Tiffany. Um, Throughout the last she year. okay? She's fine. She's been having really difficulties. Like we think any time now. Okay. Yeah, she looks like she's ready to pop. <laughs> um, so before we get started, I just want to let you know if you're right, just so that everyone's under the understanding we're on the up and up. We're not. We're we're not here to, to uh, do anything wrong here. Okay. Um, basically, I'm just going to ask you. Tell me about what happened tonight. I don't even know. It was like I don't know if he followed us home or something because. We, we, we've been running from him for a while, you know, we went to different things. When, when you say him, you mean? The, James Harris. James Harris, okay. Like we've, we've moved in so many different places, you know, and each time he finds us, and I'm always trying to be careful and follow me or whatever. Tonight we were out. And why why is it you guys are running from this guy? He's, he's like, he's obsessed with her. That's his ex. You know, they have kids together, mm -hmm. you know. I mean... Like I said, he's an older guy, she's a younger girl, you know. I understand, you know what I'm saying? I kind of understand, but he's been obsessed with her for the whole time. And tonight they're going through this thing with these kids, the other kids, their kids, or whatever. Like, he came and, like, he, I say he illegally got custody of the kids. He lied and said that he had the kids already, but he didn't have the kids. But then he brought the police over to the house. This is in North Canton mm -hmm. to get the kids or whatever. Now, you know, he went through all this court proceedings without, you know, telling anybody and got custody of the kids. And this has been going on. 
And I think he just recently found out that she was pregnant. Like she's been hiding it, you know, right. from everybody, whatever, because she doesn't want them to know. And I think he recently found out, and I don't know. I think that's what he he must have filed his home or something. I don't know. Okay, so you're at the house tonight. Yeah. Tell me about what what happened at the house. Um, she's got OCD. We go through a lot of different um, rituals to get inside the house to do to do all kind of things. Okay? okay. If you went there, you see stuff in the sink. You know, like bags of clothes. If you go in the house, there's no clothes in the house because they don't mind they're dirty. Thank you. They have to be washed. I was going in the basement, going to wash clothes or whatever. We already had clothes in the wash. I was going to go and move them to the dryer. And that's when I heard the noise. I didn't know if it was her or what was going on because she's been slipping in the tub and stuff, you know. Slipping in the tub? Slipping. Oh, slipping. Okay. Like falling. Okay. I just wanted to make sure she didn't fall or whatever. I didn't know what was going on. I just ran upstairs and here he's coming. He's coming in with the fucking gun coming down the stairs. And like, what the fuck? You know, I didn't, I didn't know. I'm just screaming, call her. Not call her. We're fighting where? in the basement. Okay, no, but when you first saw him, where were you? Coming up the stairs. How up far? Where on the stairs? I don't know, maybe midway. Not even. I was where was she at? I was running. I don't know. I thought she was in the garage. I didn't know if she was in the garage or if she was in the house. I was in the basement. She does her little ritual things, and sometimes, you know, you never know what she's doing. I, I was going downstairs to change some clothes over from the washer to the dryer mm-hmm. that we had put in there previously before we left. And I don't. I just saw a gun. A guy coming in the back door with a gun. Okay. I didn't even realize who it was until after. You know what I mean? I didn't even realize. I'm just fighting. Right. I was just really upset. Just really scared. She, you know, she put the baby in him with a gun. I was just scared. That's. You know, I just wanted to defend myself. And right. Hurt, you know. That, that's all I can. You know. So you guys met on the steps. Yeah, we met on the steps. Um, when you're on the steps, did you realize who he was? No. Okay. Cause I had just turned the lights off. I was, like I said, I was like I was on my way going upstairs anyway. I had just turned the light off. I was going upstairs, heard the bang. I wanted to start running, and you know, boom, here we go. When did you first see her during all this? <laughs> yeah, After it was kind of like it was like I blacked out. I was calling her. I was screaming her name. She came downstairs. To, to, she turned the light on, and I told her, "Help me get the gun away from him," cause he would not let go of the gun. And I'm sitting here fighting him. I'm like, "Please let go of the gun. Let go of the gun. Let go of the gun." And they go screaming and hollering. And he's screaming and hollering, I'm going to kill you and this, that. And I'm just screaming, please let the, put the gun down. I'm banging his head on the ground. I am. I'm trying to get anything to get the gun out of his fucking hand. And I don't know if, if, if he finally dropped it and she kicked it away or did I knock it away. I don't really remember. I just remember seeing the gun and acting on it. That's, that's all I can remember. Did you see the gun on the stairwell? I seen it when he came in or when I, when I was going up the stairwell. Yeah, I seen it. It was shiny. It was pretty shiny. There were other lights on. Now, when did she, how long were you guys fighting before she came downstairs? I don't even know. Your best guess. It seemed like forever. It seemed like forever. I really don't know how long it was. It could have been 15 minutes. It could have been 10 minutes. I mean, we were fucking, it seemed like oh, we were a decent amount of time. I was exhausted. You were down there by yourself just fighting him. Yeah, I was exhausted. So, okay. Um, how did he get in the back door? I have no, the back door, we don't have a key to it, so we probably pretty much left it open. Because it, the keys that I have don't work that, they work the front door, but they don't work that door. And because of her problem I was telling you about, we don't go to the front door at all. We either enter through the, gar- the, the garage, or we enter through the back door. And we, we have to go through this whole ordeal with our shoes and everything, to change our shoes just to come inside the house. You know, an officer's are in the house, if we go back there, it's gonna be a problem. I'm gonna have to get the rug doctor and clean the whole house again. Yeah, but uh, okay. So the two of you meet on the stairs. Yes. And you see he's got a gun, but at this point you don't know who he is. I didn't know who he was at first. Okay. I seen the gun and a, and a person that I didn't know come in the door. I didn't, you know. Okay. So you guys start tussling. This is not our first tussle either. You know, this is not our first tussle. We've tussled about two years ago. I made a police report down in Canton. He attacked me like. I went up there, like this is back when things were okay, you know what I mean, like she had dropped the kids off with him or whatever and it was time for us to pick him up and I went over there to pick up the kids and I guess he got an attitude problem because I came but he used to come to my house to get the kids, I never right. said anything and he came over to my truck and tried to pull me out of my truck and fight me and I'm like stop, you know, you know he's an older guy, I don't want to fight, you know, I'm like dude, you're an older guy, chill out, you know, he attacked me with a, um, a weightlifting thing 
about two years ago. I made a police report down in Canton. We took pictures. I had big lumps all over my arm from blocking and everything. But I, you know, I didn't have to hurt him that bad. Then I just, you know, I got him off me. And I think one of his friends were there, and they kind of broke it up or something. Okay. So you guys eventually get down into the basement. It's dark. We we're falling into the basement pretty much, you know. Okay. Uh, describe what happens in the basement during the fight. I'm trying to get the gun out of his hand. Okay. I'm trying to fight him to get the gun out of his hand. Did you guys eventually tumble to the ground? Yeah. We're, it didn't take long. We were on the ground pretty fast. Okay. So you guys are wrestling on the ground. Pretty much, yeah. Um, and like you said, it seemed like 10, 15, 20 minutes you were fighting. It couldn't it be like, longer. It seemed like an eternity. Okay. And eventually the lights turn on, and that's when Tiffany comes down. Yeah, she turned the lights on, yeah. Okay. Um, is he still holding the gun at this point? Uh, no, I think we kicked it across the hall. We kicked it across the room. Okay. Um, you mean like as soon as she comes downstairs? Yeah, when the lights, yeah, when the lights are on, he's still got the gun in his hand. Okay. Tell me, about the, tell me about the fight. What are you doing in this fight besides trying to get the gun away? I'm trying to hold him. He's fighting, you know, I'm trying to hold one arm and get the... I'm trying to get him in the headlock is what I'm trying to do. But he's got this gun and he's swinging it, you know. At first, first he's on... Well, I was on my back first. And I, I'm like, oh shit, you know, I got off my back. And I get on him and I'm trying to turn him over. I don't finish the wrestle. I'm trying to turn him over, you know, on his stomach so he can't really see what he's doing. You know, and, and I'm just trying to even not let go of this gun. I'm just planting his hand on the ground, banging his hand. And I started banging his head too, you know. And he's just, he's fighting hard. I'm fighting hard. Yeah, at this point, he's on his... He's on, stomach his stomach. Back. he's on his stomach. Okay, so you're, you're trying to, which hand is he holding the gun in? I think it was, I think it was his right hand. It was on his hand, he was like this on the ground, like trying, I don't know if he was trying to aim and shoot or what, I was trying to get the gun out of his hand. Okay, so you're banging his hand on the ground. I'm banging his hand and his head. Okay. I'm doing whatever. fire? I don't think so. I don't, no, I don't, I don't, like I said, I was so terrified that I didn't know, I didn't hear anything. I was hoping not because I was trying to get her to get, well, get out of there in case it did. Okay. So eventually the gun comes out of his hand. What happens to the gun after he drops it? I think I uh, either fling it across the room or, or I, I, I'm not sure. I think Tiffany might have kicked it across the room. I think she might have kicked it across Okay. How did it get out of his hand? When he stopped moving, I stopped. I was okay. like, oh shit. And I was like, oh my God, is he all right? You know? She was on the phone with the with the with nine one one. We were still fighting. We were still tussling with the gun a little bit. I think I think she was on the phone with nine one one. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, then what happened after that? Uh, the police came. Where Where was Tiffany at during all the after, after he stopped moving? She went to let the let the police inside. I think I told her to open the garage up because they you know in the front just open the garage let them in. Right. You know. I think she was just. To tell them where she was, because I don't know if they knew exactly where to go or if she gave them the address. I didn't know. Okay. And then the police showed up, and that was yeah. pretty much it. Yeah. I was, I was exhausted. I was sweating, and I, I couldn't. I didn't know if I was bleeding or he was bleeding. I didn't know what was going on. But I got blood all over. It was all over the floor. I got all because we were out. Like I said, I was on, I was on my knees too. You know, I was on my knees trying to. You know, like I said, we're on the floor tussling. The detectives realize that Paul's story is different than what Tiffany has told them. Tiffany claims to have been in the basement with Paul when James arrived, but Paul is saying she was in another part of the house. She also claimed that she only saw something shiny in James's hands, but Paul is saying that she helped get the gun away from James. The detective will now confront Paul with the inconsistencies. Okay, we talked with Tiffany, and her her rendition of what happened is quite a bit different. Is, is there any explanation as to why? <laughs> I have no idea. I have no. I have no clue. I was in the basement, like I said, so I, I have no idea. Because, like I said, I was in the basement. She was in the garage or in the house. I don't know if she was. Usually, she has to take a shower before she does anything in the house. I don't know if she was in the shower or if she was still in the garage doing something. I have no idea where she was at. Who all was in the house with the two of you? Another fe female? Another uh, female? There was a some lady came in with the cops. I don't know who she was. Uh, she had she was plain clothes. I don't know who she was. Some lady before before the police were there. No, just me. She don't even come. She don't want people to come over because she doesn't want people to 
walk into the house. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She doesn't. She doesn't allow shoes in the house. And some people kind of wonder, like, you know, why are you acting like she doesn't want people to know, you know, about her problem or whatever. When was the last time you guys had a carpet cleaned? Uh, well, right before we moved in. That was it. So a month ago. Yeah, right before we moved in. She wouldn't even go inside until the carpets were. Here's the thing, man. I'm just going to break it down for you. Um, we we have evidence, phone records, that shows that somebody lured him over to that house. Okay. Okay. Somebody had called him and had him. That I have no, I have no idea about okay. that at all. Okay. Here's the thing. All right. That has the power to get you in a lot of trouble. Say what? That has the power to get you in a lot of trouble. Okay. A lot. The man coming over with a gun in my hand. Hold house. on, hold on, hold on. Just, the thing is, is that somebody called him and brought him to that. The house. I have no idea about that. I have no, no clue Some, about well, that. Hold on. Somebody called him and got him to come over to that house. He called them when he was pulling up the house to verify that he was at the right spot. That person came out the front door of that house, met him in the driveway. And that person walked him around the back of the house, and that's how he got it. See, because now we have people telling us that, then we have the phone to match the calls up to what people are telling us. There was us. no call from me. No, but there was there was calls from his phone that match what these witnesses are telling us, so we know it's true. I have no idea about that. Okay, but right. here's the thing. If he was lured from that house, that had nothing things to do with me. me. They make things a lot of different. Terrifying him. She's terrified of this guy. The, the question is, who was it that was at that house tonight with the two of you that called no, him to Lord? There was Lord. nobody there beside her and I that I know of. Unless, like I said, unless she let the neighbor in. Maybe it was the neighbor. I don't know if she was talking to the neighbor or whatever. She she asked people questions about, like, is there any bugs over here? I mean, she's got a problem. You know, she does all kind of different crazy things that most people wouldn't do. You know, I have no idea. I was in the basement getting the laundry. I was going to put the laundry from the washer to the dryer or, or whatever, or put some more clothes in the washer. I was actually going to take the clothes I had on and off and put them in there too. Because if you went in the house, you'll see there's no clothes in there. There's certain things that don't come in the house. You know, most things don't come in the house. Cell phones, things like that. If you can't put it in the shower, it don't go in the house. So, so where does everything stay? It stays in, either in the hallway or in the car. Everything goes in the hallway or goes in the car. Like, like you can like hang a bag on the door or something, and then they can stay not in the house, but outside the house. It can be in a bag out there. Okay. How many cell phones does she have? Two. Yeah. Yeah. One cell phone, and I have a cell phone. Well, I mean, I don't know that for sure. We got to go talk to some people. But the problem is, is that the all two statement doesn't match, mm -hmm. and then we got this other stuff going on. So what else is outside that are telling us completely? I don't, know, I don't know stuff. what was going on outside. Did Tiffany talk to the neighbors outside? I have no idea. Well, I, I, I honestly believe that somebody, either her or you or the both of you know, called him, lured him to the you house. the record, you can see who was on the phone. Yeah, we're working right. on that now. It was me. Hold on. I don't think it was you or not. That's this, the, 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 hold on. The, the point is, is I believe that it was planned to bring him over. Now, whether you were involved in that plan, you had knowledge of that plan, or... It was done outside of your, you know, your knowledge. Know. But the, the plan was to bring that man over to the house, lure him to the back of the house, and then what happened, happened. So we're, we're trying to figure out who it was. The plan was to get a man with a gun into my house. Well, I don't I think, think, I don't think they understand. We don't have anything to say that that was his gun yet. We don't have anything to say that. And we don't know. We don't know. It's not registered or anything. I don't know. I don't know. We're, we're working. Anything to say that that was his the, gun. The thing is, is that... Um, maybe the plan was that we didn't know he was going to show up with a gun. All we know is we there got, was no plan. All we know is we got a dead guy in the basement. People lying to us. I, I really didn't want for that to happen. I, the guy has been a pain in my ass for ever since we've been together. But I didn't want that to happen. I just wanted to get the gun out of his hand. That, that's it. I just I, I, don't, I don't want to die. I don't want my child, my unborn child, to die. I don't and want I understand that. The, the question is. Who was it that called him that brought him to that house? Here's that the, man knows a lot of people. He knows more people than I do. He's an older guy. He knows like everybody. I think your statement and her statement Don't are so different. I mean, I'm not talking. I'm not talking about a little difference where 
you, we're not she, talking you don't know if she cr- cr- kicked it or you kicked it or a little something little like that. We're talking about they are so materially different that one they both can't be true. It's impossible. So it, the, I'm just telling you from what I remember. Okay, it, it's a big blank. It, it's like you black out when you're fighting with somebody. I blacked out, you know. Well, I just don't want to see. Go from what I, 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 I just don't want you to see see you you catch a serious charge. I don't know? want to catch a serious charge. Period. I have, I have other kid too. You know. So if there's something if there's something else going on here and it went past what was intended, you need to tell me now. There was. I had no idea. I had no clue of any of that. If that was the case, what you're talking, I have no idea. I had no no recollection of any of that. I didn't know. Well, we, the, the thing is, and, and it's the same thing we told Tiff. If that's, that's going on, I, I really want to know myself. Here's the thing. This is the same. I want to tell you the same thing we told Tiffany. Somebody was there, made phone calls to James and lured him to that house. Then met him in the house. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, no, no. Somebody at that house called him and lured him to the house. This is really hold on, let me finish. I'm talking. I'm talking now. I'm sorry. That person, a female, met him in the driveway, walked him around the back of the house, and then left the scene before the cops got there. The detectives leave the room after receiving a call from the police at the crime scene. The police had just found a disposable phone in Tiffany's backyard. Several calls had been made from that phone to James's phone right before the incident took place. The detectives will now confront Tiffany and then Paul with the evidence. Good news. Detective Ross will be in a second. We found the phone that lured, that lured your child's father up there. It was in your side yard, hidden by a fence. We found it. Yeah, it was. We're gonna show you. We're gonna bring the phone in. We're gonna call it. Okay. And we're gonna show you the phone that we found the phone. Um, uh, you need to tell us the truth now. We have the we have the phone. There's no doubt. He didn't know he was coming to your house. He was lured there, and we can prove it. <laughs> yes. My child almost died. I could have died tonight. We can prove that he was lured to your house. We can prove it. There's no doubt. I'm going to show it to you in just a right. minute. So, sure. And when you see it, you better start telling the truth or you're going to wind up in prison. And that's just how that's going to go. I understand what you're saying. You keep telling me that, but I don't think you do. No, I really understand. But it's just, it's always been, it's always like this. It's always like this. He just... You know, it's just... No. I have... I swear to God. You know... The phone that was in your yard called him today. We we have the phone. When we were looking for the phone out there, we called the number and we heard it ringing. It was laying in your yard. In my yard. In your yard. I would like to see the phone. because We're going to show it to you. I'm just saying, though, I, me or my child, we could have died tonight, and I'm the one with the finger pointed at. You know what Bro, I mean? Oh yeah. And it's been like it's always like that. That's why he keeps getting away with all this stuff. It keeps just. He didn't do anything wrong tonight. He, came, he didn't do anything he came, wrong. He came. He came. He came to a house to look at a car and got ambushed. A car. He got ambushed. He got ambushed. Okay. He didn't come to look at no car. Yeah, he did. No, sir, he did yeah, he not. Did. Hey, John. Yeah. Bring that track phone. He didn't come to look at no car, sir. I swear to God. He didn't yeah, he come did. to look at no car. Yeah, he did. You know how many I cars can, he has? I can prove it. He has like I'm, I'm about cars. to prove it to you right now. He has like 100 cars, sir. You guys lured him up there and then you killed him. Uh-huh. No. I don't, I don't. Well, tell me where I'm wrong. I don't want him gone. I need him to have my kids. Whatever. I really do. Okay. I need I'm just going to show you the proof. I need him to have my kids. Then I'm going to ship you off to jail. I need him to have my kids. Hi. Hey, just how it's going to go. Okay. Found at your house. In the yard. The 
phone used to call him to lure him to the house. We have his phone, that phone number, called his phone. That's the phone he's talking to when he arrives at your house. And the phone's in your yard. We know he was lured there. Dad, <laughs> can you turn it on? Sure. I bet you any amount of money, if you look at, there's a picture of my daughter on it. If that, because there's been several, they cost $10. Okay, and if you had even looked at my messaging, I've given my daughter so many phones, but I I don't think that's the phone that my daughter had. I know it's not. Okay, can, We've already can, looked can, can, I, look, can yeah. I look at it? No. Can you turn it on and show me the well, there no, There's no phone, it, it's a track phone. There's no pictures, there's no camera. It happens. This isn't the first case that we've had where people have dropped evidence accidentally. You guys actually think I want him dead? You think yeah. I'm about to have a baby? I, I don't want. Not dead. Problems. You you caused him to be lured to your house tonight, and he is dead. Whether you wanted him or dead or not, it's irrelevant. Yeah. Why was this phone calling him, trying to send him a car from your house? There was nobody from my house calling him, sir. But I do not want him dead. I did not want him dead at all. Then why was the person on this phone calling him, getting him to come to your house? I don't have any person, sir. No, 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 no. Answer my question. Don't, don't run around in circles. Why was the person calling from this phone, calling his phone, telling him to come to your house? You know, I told you guys, I don't want my address out. Okay? I don't, would not have him come there. And you say you believe that I want him dead. At least he, you know, kind of thinks that maybe I didn't want him dead because I didn't want him dead. Or maybe you okay. wanted him to show up in the house so you could call the police and say he was harassing you. For what? Could you get your kids back? I'm going to get them back anyway. Listen, if that's what it was, if you just, if you were just, it, it got out of hand, you need to tell us now. Because as it, as it, you're, you're running out of options. Like I told you, we're going to prove it. Okay? I you're going to end up in prison. No, I don't think you understand. No, sir, I do really understand what you're saying, so, sir. So why don't you tell us the truth now? I, Stay out of prison. As far as somebody no, is, and else is involved, I don't know any. You, did you ask Paul? Because I don't know anybody else to be involved. I was freaking shocked when he came here, okay? I swear to God, I was freaking shocked. I was upset because he knew the address. You're lying. No, 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 I'm not I'm lying. I'm looking right at you. You're lying. You're lying. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm well, not lying. Okay. So, we'll just, no, you've you dug your hole. You don't no, want to climb out of it. You don't I'm want to be honest. To be That's what, no, you're not trying at all. Please. No. Can I call a lawyer or somebody? When can I use the phone? The detectives leave Tiffany alone in the interrogation room so they can have the same conversation with Paul in the other room. At this point, they believe that someone called James, telling him they had a car for sale. Sorry, dude. Oh, dude. Is... Hey, what time is it? It's time for you to start being honest. That's what time it is. Check it out, man. In this, if we went back out to your place, try to find you some clothes, you're right, all your stuff's in the laundry. Problem is, we also found the phone. We found the phone. Later, you, my phone? Later, not your phone. We found the phone that was calling that man's phone that lured him to your house. Okay. He's laying in the yard. I didn't know about that. Okay. You still killed him after he was lured to your house. I did not know that. I did not doesn't know. doesn't matter if you knew it or not. Who lured him there? That's what we're asking you. I Listen, don't know. If you, you don't have them? I, don't, I didn't know that he was lured. We're going to have them. We're going to have them because we have the phone. Okay. We're getting your DNA off the phone right now, and we're going to have them, and they're going to tell on you guys so fast. I have no idea about that at all. I have no idea. I just know a guy breaks into my house with a gun, and I'm trying to defend myself. That's all that I know. If someone called him and lured him there, that I had no idea. He didn't break into your house. He didn't break into your house. There's no sign that anybody broke into anything. I said he, he was walked around your back of your house by another girl. I had no clue of that. Bullshit. Oh my god. It is time for you to tell the if truth. You, if you're gonna lock me up, just lock me up, okay? Just call. Me. I'll, 
Oh, I ain't got nothing else to say because I don't know about that. That if I have no clue, I can't tell you. Okay, I don't know. Yes, you do. I do not know. I truly do not know. Okay, ask um, your story about what happened. Tiffany's story about what happened are black and white, night and day different. That's what stuff. you said. But like I said, completely different. Fighting the man, I was. No, I'm talking about the stuff leading up to. Okay, I don't. Then this guy gets several phone calls. Luring him to your house. He's on. Me. He's on the. Fo- he's on the phone with, the phone with me. I don't know who was on the phone. He's on the phone. He's on. He's on the phone. He's on the phone. Ten minutes before you killed him. And that phone is at your house. I didn't phone. mean to kill him. Okay, I did not mean to kill anybody. I was defending myself. Period. That that is all. He did not break in your house. He didn't even know it was your house. He was at. He this isn't there. the first time the man has come around my house that he didn't know where we supposed to be lived at. This is like the third or fourth time. No, what I'm saying is through the phone records, we can prove that he was going to I'm your glad. house. I didn't do it, and I had no knowledge of that. I promise you, I had no knowledge of him being lured anywhere. Period. That I had no knowledge of. We'll okay? What did she? I'm not. I'm she's, you're, you're letting her get you in all kinds of trouble, man. You need to. I mean, you just need to come correct. You're letting her ruin your life. You understand that I have no idea. You are letting her ruin your life. Well, I ruined my life by fighting. Period. I should just let her come in and fucking shoot me. I guess. I mean, no. Fuck. You are ruining your. You're letting her ruin your life. How is she ruining my life? The man came in the house with a gun. I should have just let him shoot me. Correct. And then he, I'd be dead and he would be here. And then he could tell you how he was lured here or whatever. But I'd be dead. We or know, she'd be dead. We know he was lured there. We want to know who lured him there. I have, that's what I'm saying. If he was lured there, I have no idea. If she lured him there, I had no acknowledgement of that at all, period. Why would she lure him there? Listen, if he was it, why would he come charging down the basement stairs at you? The man, your story doesn't make any sense, dude. Man is obsessed with her. This isn't the first time he's done shit to her. I mean, why would he just come charging down the stairs at you? We, like I said, we. And if he was good, why didn't he just shoot? Well, then why didn't he just shoot you? He had the gun. We had all cases two years. Ago. I could have just shot you. Why know. would he show up there to, to barge in the house with a gun with his kids in the in the van? I I, mean, I don't know who was in the van. I had no idea. All of his daughters were in the van I had and no, his son. I had no. His son I saw no the whole idea. thing. Told the old guy, the, the older son or mm-hmm. whatever. I have no idea who was in the van. His son. I didn't even know he had a van. I, I knew he had a, 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 a bigger, what you call it, a Ford something other. His son saw the girl walking around back the house. Then why didn't he come in? What's that? Why didn't he come in? He didn't come in because he didn't know what was going on. He thought everything was cool. It wasn't somebody he knows. He didn't even know you guys were there. All I'm saying is, I had no idea. Okay, somebody called him and brought him in there. I had no idea. All right, after the fact. That's all I After the fact. All I know is a guy with a gun. What did she, what did she tell you after the fact then? What did who tell me? Tiffany. She didn't tell me anything. After this shit happened, nothing happened. I haven't spoken to her, period. The police had me downstairs and she was upstairs. I haven't spoken to her. That's why you guys have stories. Period. Like she didn't tell me anything. The, the, what is, like I said, my thing is the guy's coming in. I'm fighting for my life and her life or whatnot. That's it. That's all I can do. I, or maybe you guys are fighting. He pulled the gun out to protect himself. For, for me? In my house. He came in my house. He didn't know it was your house. We can already prove that. He had no way of knowing. How can prove that he doesn't know where, that, where we live? He was I mean, lured there for this phone. I don't see a bag there. I don't see a phone. I don't know about a phone. This phone is, it, he found it laying in your yard. That could be anybody's we call phone. The, we call it the phone and it rings. Okay, it's not my phone. number that's in his phone. It's not mine. You've never touched this phone? I've never touched that phone. Okay. It's not my phone. When we track down where it was bought and who put money on it, it's not going to come back to you or Tiffany? No. I'm not, I'm, Tiffany, I don't know. Me, no. Well, you're going to be just as much trouble if it comes back to her. I understand that. I understand that completely. There's nothing I can do. Right, dude. It, it, it is what it is. I'm you telling know. you, bail out of this now. There's, nothing, there's no such thing as bailing out. Somebody is dead.
because of me. There's no fucking bailing out of that. You can bail out if you tell there's the no, truth. There is no bailing. That's that's a bunch of bullshit. Bail I've out. told you the truth, and you're still telling me I'm lying. I have no no idea about that. Period. Okay. It doesn't matter if I knew about it or if I don't know about it. I'm going to jail. Okay. That's just the way it is, and I don't know about it. So if you if you're taking me down whatever to to um, uh, whatever street that is, just it's just get well, over it, man. Just, I'm tired and I'm ready to go to, to sleep. You know, I don't feel good. I've been here for what, seven hours. I have no idea how long I've been here. I'm ready to go. I didn't mean to hurt anybody. I didn't want to hurt anybody. None of that was on my my shit for the day, yesterday or any other day. I have no idea about that damn phone. If you found it, it could have been anybody's phone. Could have been the neighbors. People walk through the yard all the time. I, I don't know whose phone. It why would your neighbors call? I didn't mean why, anybody. Hold on. Why would your neighbors call Tiffany's ex boyfriend and tell him to come to the house? I didn't say I that. Mean, the, that phone, that phone is the one that called him. We already verified that. Okay. This phone is the one that called him. I've never him. seen that phone. I have an Android phone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tiffany has an Android phone. Are you willing to give us permission to search through your phone? Yes. Go ahead. I'm, I'm already in custody. Go through my phone. My phone's in the house in the bag on the door that I told you was hanging up because she makes us go through things when we take her. You gotta take your clothes off and put them in the bag. It's in the bag. Yeah, you don't even need my permission to go through my phone. <laughs> okay. Me, I mean, is there any way we can just speed this up? Yeah, I know you're blocking me. You're, you're taking me to jail. Can we just get that? I have to go back to the bathroom too. Can I go, okay. please? Tiffany and Paul would both be charged with murder. Paul would agree to testify against Tiffany in court and explain exactly what happened. Paul claimed that Tiffany and a friend she met at a homeless shelter concocted a plan to get James to come to her house. Paul stated that their only intention was to get James to violate a protection order that they didn't realize was no longer active. When James arrived, an argument broke out between Paul and James. James explained that the reason the fight escalated was because James pulled his gun out during the argument, but there was no evidence confirming this actually happened. In the end, both Paul and Tiffany would receive life in prison. Paul is eligible for parole after 15 years and Tiffany after 30. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this case, so please share them in the comments below.